Hello and welcome everybody, my name is Forrest with Fofo Astro and today I want to take a look at something that is a little bit more, uh, I think a lot of people take it for granted, let's say, and that is power management. So you guys know that I have a remote observatory and more than that, my remote observatory is solar powered. So I'm running all of my observatory, roof motor, weather sensor, guide camera, main camera, networking equipment, all of that stuff off of batteries. And so power management becomes very important for me because if I run out of power and a storm rolls in and my roof can't close, I lose all my stuff. So it's a pretty important thing for me personally. But what I wanna talk about today is how power management can affect the average astrophotographer. The astrophotographer who shoots in their backyard or who maybe goes out and drives a couple hours to a nice dark sky site. How can you best manage your power? And what I wanna do is I wanna break these power management videos up into two parts. So today in part one, what I wanna talk about is kind of best practices for power sources, for where you source your power from. And then in part two, I wanna talk about, all right, now that you have your power source, whether that's a battery or an extension cord running from your house, whatever it happens to be, how do we get that power from that location to our different devices in our setup, okay? So part one, power sources. Now, when we start talking about power sources, I wanna, for one thing, give you the way to click out of this video instantly. If you always observe right next to your house, you'll just run an extension cord, plug it into a power strip, and hook all your devices in that way, and you'll be good to go, you have unlimited power. So if that's your situation and you're always near main power, you don't need to watch this video. This video is gonna be for those people who have portable rigs, who have rigs that they take outside with them, that they go different locations with, and you wanna look at different power sources. So for those of us who go outside, we are gonna be looking at batteries. We're gonna be looking at some form of stored energy system. And batteries range from very small, I don't have one next to me, but from very small little USB power banks all the way up to, you know, thousands and thousands of watt hours in big, heavy lead acid batteries and everywhere in between. So what I recommend doing as you're kind of figuring out what's the best power source for your setup is to make a little Excel spreadsheet. And I think that uh, you can totally do this on a piece of paper too, but for me, Excel works the best. And what you should do in Excel is you should make a column for your different devices. List out all the devices that you use during a given observing night. So if you've got your, you know, your main imaging camera, you've probably got your mount, you've probably got your uh, laptop, the different things that you need to observe, go ahead and list those out in the first column. In the second column, you wanna put the voltage. Third column, you wanna put the amperage. Fourth column, you wanna put the wattage. So just put headers up there for each of those things. And then on the fifth column, you wanna put watt hours. And then on the sixth column, you wanna put the number of hours you're gonna use that thing. So let's talk about each of those. All of our devices, whatever they are, pull a certain amount of amps at a certain number of volts. And most stuff in the astro world runs on either 12 volts or five volts. There are some things in between at like, you know, seven volts or nine volts, but most things are either five volts or 12 volts. What you wanna do is you wanna do a little bit of research. Look up all the different devices that you have. You might even look at the little, uh, the little wall wart, the little thing you plug into the wall that powers those devices, and read out how many volts that item is. You wanna fill out your spreadsheet with all of the different voltages for those different devices. Then, you wanna look on the same websites and the same places, and you wanna find the number of amps that that device pulls. Now, one quick thing. Most manufacturers are gonna list those amps as the maximum amperage that that device will pull. But you wanna use maximums here because it's good to plan for the most amount of power. And I, I should stop real quick and say, the goal here is to see how much power we need in a given night. Therefore, we can get a battery that's big enough to do that. Now, one other little thing I should say, a lot of our devices have built-in batteries. If you use a DSLR, right, you have DSLR batteries. Well, you might wanna, instead of switching out your DSLR battery 15 times during the night, you might wanna run your DSLR off of a bigger battery so you don't have to change them out. If your mount has a built-in battery, if you're using like a Sky Tracker or a Sky Guider, well, the Sky Guider or Sky Tracker battery might only last four or five hours. What if you wanna go 10 hours? Well, then you're gonna to need to pull five of those hours off of your main battery pack. So. List out voltages, list out amperages for all of your devices. Third thing you wanna do is you wanna do a little calculation. If you multiply volts times amps, you get watts, and watts is a unit of power. 
Watts is kind of the, uh, the way that we like to talk about how much power something draws. And so you wanna multiply that out if you've got your, your volts times your amps. So as an example, I have an Apogee camera. It pulls about four amps at 12 volts. 4 times 12 is 48, so it pulls 48 watts. So I would put 48 in the watts column, and I would do that for all of my different things. Now, the next column is how much time you're going to use each thing. Let me give you guys an example. If you have like a, an iPolar or a QHY Pole Master to do your polar aligning, and you only need your laptop for the first 30 minutes to make that happen, you're not going to need to put your laptop as a 10 hour device, as something you need all night. But if you're running a guiding system, you might need your laptop all night. So in that hours box, you're gonna put how many hours you are gonna use, you need to use each thing during the night. So my Apogee camera, I would need to use for 10 hours. I would need to use for the whole night. If you're only ever gonna go out for two hours, put two hours, but however long you wanna use that device, put that in that next column. Now, simple math, the next column over is watt hours, W-H. Watt hours is the number of watts for hours that you're gonna use something. So if my Apogee camera pulls 48 watts, let's just say 50, and I need it for 10 hours, it's gonna pull 500 watt hours in the course of a night. So I would put 500 or 50 times 10 to get that. I'd put 480 actually, because it's you know 48 times 10. But you wanna multiply the number of watts the thing pulls by the number of hours that you're gonna pull it for and put that in the final column, okay? So now we know in the course of a night how much power each item is gonna draw, how many total watt hours we're gonna pull. And I would sum that watt hours column and get the total sum of how much power you're gonna use in a night. So that gives us an idea of how big of a battery we need. Now you guys, this could range from all over the board. Um, you could need 100 watt hours, you could need 1,000 watt hours. <coughs> Excuse me. My observatory pulls about 1,000 watt hours to 2,000 watt hours in a given night. It's a crap ton of power. Not everyone's gonna be in that situation, so it really just depends what your setup is, but you've got your sum total there. So now that we have that, we need to figure out how big of a battery we need. Okay, now batteries are direct current, and most batteries that you're gonna buy are gonna be 12 volt batteries, unless you're just getting a small USB power bank where you, that'll probably be a five volt battery, okay? Now, when it comes to batteries, very important, you can always step 12 volts down to five volts and five volts up to 12 volts. Sorry, my cat's attacking my camera, there we go. You can always step five volts up to 12 or 12 down to five, as long as it's still DC current, so that's totally fine to do. What you wanna do though is get a battery that is the voltage of most of your stuff. So for me, most of my stuff is 12 volts, so I have a 12 volt battery system that I personally use, okay? What you wanna do is this. If you're gonna do a 12 volt battery, you need to multiply the 12 volts out of the equation. And what I mean by that is this, batteries are measured usually, their capacity is measured in amp hours, not watt hours. We have a watt hour measurement right now. So let's say we need a thousand watt hours. If we wanna convert that into amp hours, we take the number of watt hours and we divide by the voltage of our battery. So say we needed 1200 watt hours in a given night. If we divide that by 12, because we're gonna do a 12 volt system, we need 100 amp hours of battery capacity, okay? That gives us how much battery we need. We're almost there, I promise. I know this is a long video. So next thing that we need to do is we need to go on Amazon, on the old Amazon, and we need to find a battery that has enough amp hours to get us through the night, okay? So you do a little search, you're gonna find lithium batteries, you're gonna find lead acid batteries, but you need a battery with at least 100 amp hours or however many amp hours you calculated of capacity. Now, couple quick disclaimers. Lithium batteries are gonna be very expensive. They're just at that point right now where they're kind of pricey per the capacity, okay? And the problem with that is, is that you are gonna to have to pay a premium in order to get them. But a lithium battery can be taken down to zero. A lead acid battery, you only ever wanna to discharge to about 50%. What I mean by that is this. If you run all this calculation and you find out that you need 50 amp hours of battery, of power, you can buy a 50 amp hour lithium battery, be good to go. 
For lead acid, though, which come in a lot of different varieties, you'll find sealed lead acid, AGM lead acid, flooded lead acid, all these different kinds. For a lead acid battery, you're going to want to find a 100 amp hour battery so that during the course of the night, you only take it down to about 50%. Okay? From there, you guys, order that battery. You're going to get this big battery and you're going to need to charge it. So another thing to budget out would be a charger for it. I recommend for lead acid batteries, you get yourself um, a battery minder. I linked them down in the description. It's just a little device that you plug into the positive and the negative terminals of your battery and it charges it for you. Lithiums are going to have their own way to charge, but either way you get yourself a battery. One other thing I should say, if all of your stuff is 5 volt, if everything you use charges off of USB, buy yourself a little USB power bank because that's going to be a lithium battery and it's going to have a lot of juice in it. But again, you should run all these same calculations and find out how much power you need and how much power you're going to have. Okay. Whew. I know that was a lot of stuff, you guys. I apologize, but I do think it's really important. This was part one of the video. In part two, next week, we're going to talk about, all right, now that you've got this battery, how do we distribute it to all of your different devices? How do we safely get that power to everything? And the reason that's important is you don't want to run a power cable for every device on your rig because then you're going to have like 10 power cables. And as your telescope slews, it's dragging all this cable around. It's just not optimal. So next video, we're going to talk about how to get that power from your big battery and get it to all of the different devices in the system. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you have a question, leave it in the comment section down below. And lastly, hit subscribe to stay up to date with future videos. You guys are awesome. Keep shooting. Hope you have clear skies and beautiful nights. And it's getting to be winter. So good. I love winter skies. They're so clear and pure and nice if you can survive the cold. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!